We have already developed a REST API using Dune on Linux, protected it with the JVT authentication and connected it to the MongoDB Atlas. To complete this story, we need to configure our deployment process and deploy the app to the cloud. So this is what this video is about and let's get started. And first of all, let's briefly review our application. This is a basic REST API. Here we have some unit tests. We can run them with the Dune test. Some error like Dino test. And here we have the results. Also, we can run lint like Dino lint. Again, we need to provide some unstable flag here. All right, we see that all of our files passed the check. So we're going to run all of them within our workflow process. And also let's try to run the whole application like this. We can see that it is running. Let's open our Postman. We click send and yeah, we have results. So this is ideally what we'd like to get when we deploy our application to the Heroku. First of all, you need to create a GitHub repository. I have already done it and pushed my source code here. Next, we need to open the Heroku and create a new app. So we can add some name here like uh, Dino Deploy. It's not available, okay, API. Okay, that's fine. Create the app. Here we need to choose the deployment method to as a GitHub. So we need to provide our repository name. It should be deploy Dino to Heroku. Search. Yeah, we have this one. We connect it. Okay, we can see that uh, the repository is connected. Next, we need to enable automatic deploys. Okay, so when the automatic deploys is enabled, next we need to choose uh, the build pack for our Dino application. So build pack is a thing that is actually will be running while building our application. I wasn't able to find a specific build pack here, so we can open the GitHub repository with uh, this one and just use it. So we can open this getting started link copy this line and paste it to our build pack like this and save it so as you can see at the description to this build pack it parses the proc file and download all dependencies at push time so now we need to create this proc file we'll open the visual studio code add a new file here and paste the following command. So it says that it will be a web application. This command will be run. Uh, we enumerate all of the permissions that we need. You may not need all of them, so keep this in mind. I add the file which will be run and the port. So again, do not grant more permissions than your application actually needs. That's it for now here. Let's add this file and push it to our repository. It is pushed and now we need to get back to our github repository so we can see that the file is already here and now it's time to set up our github actions so we click this tab um, then set up workflow yourself and here we have a template so instead of using the basic template i will use my own so i paste it here and that's how it works first of all it runs on every push to our branch Next, we run up our application on multiple agents, I mean, on multiple operation systems. And while working, it will check out the GitHub source code. Next, uh, it will establish the Dino environment, like setup Dino. Then we will cache the dependencies, run the lint, so to make sure that our code doesn't have any discrepancies in the styles, the way, I mean, we write the source code, and eventually just run the unit tests. So if all of them will pass correctly, then we will actually deploy our application to the Heroku. Let's see how it will work. Click commit, commit new file. And uh, if you open actions, now you should see some workflow here. 
yeah we have one so click create main and yeah we need to wait for a while until these steps will be running it took some time for them to get started and now you can see that four of them has already been completed let's open it and take a look at the output so you can see lint, you can see the results of running the unit tests and post setup. Looks like it's completed correctly. Yeah, now we can see that all of them have passed and we can proceed with our actual deployment. If we open Heroku and we can see that actually the build is failed. And according to the build log, it looks like we must up something with the build pack let's take a look at the settings uh, yeah the build pack url is heroku dina getting started which i think is incorrect so yeah it sounds like instead of using this one we need to use the second link i'm sorry about that let's try to run it once again and we'll see how it will work so we remove the build pack we add a new one okay and try to rerun the deployment so we can click deploy and deploy branch manually. We can see how it is building. Actually, that's a good opportunity to see how the manual deploy work. Let's open the build block here. You can see lots of action that is happening here as well. So it is launching, compressing. And yeah, it sounds like it has been successfully deployed to our URL. Let's see it in action. As you can see, our application has been deployed and now it's time to test it. So we can open the settings tab and um, here is the block called domain. This is our URL. So I opened the postman, I did the collection where I have the host variable and paste my URL here. Let's click save. So now when I run the application, you can see that the URL is actually different. So click send and we have the application error. Let's see what's wrong with it. It can be done again by taking a look at the logs. So here we have the view logs button. When you click it, uh, we can see that actually the web process failed to bin to port within 60 seconds of launch. And the reason behind it is that actually the Heroku platform gives you the port that you need to listen to. So in other words, there is no way to ask it, I mean, to listen for this port. We need to listen to the one that we get from the arguments. To make it happen, we need to change our source code like this. So for example, if we didn't get any port, then we just listen to the default one. Otherwise, we parse our arguments and listen to this one. So the parts we can get from our depths.ts. Let's add it here as well. And to the depths.ts, we need to add this line. Okay, let's add our changes. The source code has been pushed and now let's take a look at our deployment process. So as we were planning is to deploy our application every time the source code is pushed. So we can see that the test is failed and that's because of some linked errors. So what I don't like about recording the videos is that if there is a problem, then it will definitely happen. So in this case, I've just copy pasted this code and as you can see, this space is not the one like this space. And now I have a link error, so we need to change it somehow. Example, let's try to replace it. I don't know, this is weird. Now it is replaced. We can see the difference. Okay, beautiful. So let's edit. I hope that was the last unplanned error. Open the GitHub, click at the actions. We can see this one. Yeah, and again, the jobs gets running. So let's wait it for a while. It took less than a minute to complete some of them. So I think that it should be fine. Yeah, all of them 
pretty much all of them have been completed. So let's open Heroku and see what we have here. Yeah, the application has been just deployed. And again, let's try to test it. So open the Postman, click here, and we can see that we are unauthorized. So first of all, some of our logic is running, which is great. Let's try to use it. And yeah, now we have the internal server error. Let's again take a look at the web logs. So open Heroku, click more, view logs. And yeah, this is not so informative, but according to these two lines, I might think that probably this is an error of our settings. So if you open the settings tab, you can see the config wars. And here, if we take a look on them, you can see that they are actually empty. At the same time, if you open the application and look at our end file, you can see that we have them. So this is the time when we need to add these settings here. So first of all, let's start with our API secret. Click add, and I hope it can help us to fix the error. Let's send it. And yeah, now we have the access token, so we can just copy it and add it to our endpoint. This is still unauthorized, so let's see what we have now. We we'll open Dino, overview, view logs. And again, now it's time about not being able to connect to our MongoDB. So as I said, we need to add more config bars here. So let me just add it on my own. All right, so we added all of them and let's see how it will work. Again, we'll open the postman, send the request. And finally, we get the response. So this is our application. It is deployed to Heroku and can get the response. If you open the application logs at Heroku, you will also see some valid responses with the correct status code from your application. And this is it. Uh, now we have the configured deployment process with the lint and unit tests. The application deploys automatically, runs in the cloud, and connects to the MongoDB Atlas. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time.